Hello everyone, welcome and uh, happy World Disability Day. Um, can I very quickly ask how many of you have been to a UXPA uh, event before? Wow, quite a few. Um, and who hasn't? Right, so for these people you have to tolerate me for a couple of more slides. Um, basically, I've started doing this because I was surprised of how many people don't know UXPA, considering that it's an international non-for-profit organization. Uh, it's been going on for about 23 years internationally, and about half of that, 12 years, um, I know this is not perfect math, um, in, in the UK. So, broadly speaking, it's about supporting the profession uh, and the professionals within it. Uh, more specifically, we have monthly events, uh, regular workshops. Uh, we, we do promote workshops of um, any other UX-related um, organization. So do let us know. Um, subscribe to our newsletter. We have a jobs board as well. So if you are advertising for a job, uh, please come along. It's free. Uh, if you're looking for a job, go to our website. Um, now, our members have a few more perks. Uh, one of them is mentoring. Um, having said that, we need mentors. We've got quite a few, but the list is growing for mentorship. There are a lot of people who are coming into our industry and just need a little bit of confidence boost, a bit of a direction. So it's a very fulfilling um, job to do. Uh, is, is anyone in the room mentor that would care to share that they are? Right, no. So hopefully next year when I ask this question, I'm going to see loads of hands. Um, and if you want to talk to Raj, who is back there, He's the academic liaison, uh, and, and he's um, curating the mentorship program. So we've got discounts uh, to international events, and we also got a LinkedIn group where um, we've got a small community that is starting for members where we get early bird tickets as well. So very quickly as well, we are a committee of volunteers. We are looking for uh, new people to join every year. We've got an elections going on. It's currently open, so the, uh, the nominations will close on the 20th. Uh, please go to the website if you're interested in any of these roles or if you indeed want to suggest a new role that we may be missing, uh, you're welcome to stand for that position. Uh, and the roles are for two years. That doesn't mean that we're not um, welcoming any help that is a smaller project, if you like. If you want to get involved with something for a couple of months, do, do come along and, um, and we'll do our best to um, well, accommodate you and, and use your, your help as well. Um, we had a very successful year, many events, having had 13 so far. Uh, the next one is um, just going for a bit of networking, just Christmas drinks in conjunction with XDA. Uh, Jason, still all right to go to the pub? Yeah. Cool, okay. So UXP and XDA are having drinks on the 12th. Uh, and we're going to start next year, the January event is going to be on persuasive design, design psychology, uh, and for a very good reason, because we'll have the international conference uh, of UXPA, it's the 23rd one, it's coming to London. And that's the first time in the history of the organization. Um, we're hoping that every other year it's going to be in a European city, so be less US-centric. Um, uh, so please, you know, take part. Uh, the submissions are going to open soon, so keep an eye make a submission, um, be a reviewer, please. Uh, if, you, if you want to sponsor, this is a great opportunity for your company to reach out to international on this instance, and of course attend. It's gonna be on the 21st of July. So enough about the XBA, about today. Uh, many thanks to Thomson Reuters for uh, making this happen again. Uh, it's, been, it's been many years now that World Disability Day uh, and our careers event annually is, has been hosted here. And of course, that wouldn't have happened without uh, Monica, who is our events manager and our new secretary, who curated this event um, along with Polly uh, and Claire from Thomson Reuters as well. So uh, please put your hands together to thank them. <laughs> now, coming to the topic of healthcare, uh, it's. Uh, it's a coincidence, if you like, lends itself to talk about the fact that it's on the news again. So uh, BBC tells us that patient numbers have gone uh, up by 50% the past decade. About 40% of people who attend A&E do not need to uh, be treated there. And actually, a lot of the problems that they may develop 
about one fifth of them um, would not have if they were treated in their community uh, at an earlier stage. And of course, the solution is to throw a lot of money at the problem. Uh, and at the moment, uh, the proposed solution looks something like that. Basically, we're going to have two different um, levels of emergency centers and many other different services that are coming to, um, for, for, for patients to come into uh, the healthcare. Now, on the same website, BBC, I've, I've read some of the comments uh, from the readers. <clears throat> so, people don't necessarily think that this is the solution. People may think that the problem is somewhere else. And, and they're saying what we've heard a lot from behavioral psychologists as well, that it's not necessarily that we want many choices. And, and in, this care, uh, in this instance, is about providing good care and respect. So my point here being, um, are we focusing on the, on the right issues? And what, is the, what, what does the UX have to, to do? What, what's the role that it can play? Uh, within this, and that's what we're hoping to cover tonight, or at least a part of. So, um, unfortunately, we had one cancellation, but uh, that's right. We're going to have more questions for Q&A. We have three wonderful speakers. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Esteban, who's going to give us a top-down view of the uh, use of data for the health professionals. They are, they are um, kind of have similar challenges with uh, the financial industry, so um, they have loads of experience telling us how we can um, filter out the noise of all of this data and make sense of it. Uh, then Denise is going to probably, look, my interpretation of it is that we're going to have a bottom-up, if you like, for people, for the patients. Um, numbers don't necessarily mean a lot, uh, and it's about um, engaging them with, with them with empathy. Uh, and then finally, Sam is going to have a more uh, detailed focus, again, my interpretation, um, on, on a specific um, method of uh, entering data and if, because we, we are all slaves of forms and whether that is a, a good solution or not. So that's all about me. And now Esteban, the uh, head of UX and design here at Thomson Reuters, is going to start off with data insight through design. Thank you. 